Hello, I hope everyone is doing well. We have chapter 21 today. Then Job answered, uh, referring to Zophar from yesterday, listen carefully to my speech and let this be your way of consolation. Bear with me that I may speak. Then after I have spoken, you may mock. As for me, is my complaint to man? And why should I not be impatient? Look at me and be astonished and put your hand over your mouth. Even when I remember I am disturbed and horror takes hold of my flesh. Why do the wicked still live, continue on, also become very powerful? The answer to this question is found in Matthew chapter 5, verse 45, that says, For he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. So in other words, this world allows temporary pleasures to the wicked, but judgment is waiting at the end of it. All right, let's let Job continue expressing his grief here. Their descendants are established with them in their sight, and their offspring before their eyes. Their houses are safe from fear, and the rod of God is not on them. Again, referring to the wicked. His ox mates without fail, his cow calves and does not abort. They send forth their little ones like the flock, and their children skip about. They sing to the timbrel and harp, and rejoice at the sound of the flute. They spend their days in prosperity, and suddenly they go down to Sheol. They say to God, depart from us. We do not even desire the knowledge of your ways. Who is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what would we gain if we entreat him? Behold, their prosperity is not in their hand. The counsel of the wicked is far from me. How often is the lamp of the wicked put out, or does their calamity fall on them? Does God apportion destruction in his anger? Are they as straw before the wind and like chaff which the storm carries away? You say, God stores away a man's iniquity for his sons. Let God repay him so that he may know it. Let his own eyes see his decay and let him drink of the wrath of the Almighty. For what does he care for his household after him when the number of his months is cut off? Can anyone teach God knowledge and that he judges those on high? One dies in his full strength, being wholly at ease and satisfied. His sides are filled out with fat, and the marrow of his bones is moist, while another dies with a bitter soul, never even tasting anything good. So he's pointing out to his friends that their advice doesn't add up because there were plenty of people in the world doing worse than him and getting away with it. Verse 26, together they lie down in the dust and worms cover them. Behold, I know your thoughts and the plans by which you would wrong me? For you say, where is the house of the nobleman, and where is the tent, the dwelling places of the wicked? Job knew they wouldn't listen to him, so we're about to see him suggest that they ask travelers, any of whom would tell them that wicked people prosper sometimes in this life, but that there will be a day of doom after they die. Verse 29, have you not asked wayfaring men, and do you not recognize their witness? For the wicked is reserved for the day of calamity. They will be led forth at the day of fury. Who will confront him with his actions? And who will repay him for what he has done? While he is carried to the grave, men will keep watch over his tomb. The clods of the valley will gently cover him. They'll be under the dirt. Moreover, all men will follow after him, while countless ones go before him. People dying all the time. Verse 34. How then will you vainly comfort me? For your answers remain full of falsehood. Okay, well, the chapter comes to an abrupt stop today, but we'll pick up tomorrow. And I hope you can stick around and pray with me. Jesus, we come before you today in praise and adoration. But we also want you to know how much we need you and want you strongly present in our lives. Life is full of ups and downs, and we need you in all of it. So as part of your family, we just want to express this to you. We want to tell you that we love you and that we need your guidance, protection, help, and love every day. Today's chapter reminds us that although those who act wickedly on this planet get away with it for a short time, ultimately justice will be served if they don't come to repentance. So first and foremost, we want to continue praying for all the lost souls, even those who are, are caught in horrific sin at the moment right now, Lord. Would you allow their darkened, hardened hearts to soften, and become aware of the evil and hurt they're causing others and bring them to their knees through faith that leads to repentance. We also pray for those whose sins may not seem as horrific on the surface, 
but to you are just as, as wicked. Those who are caught in deception through false teaching or self-righteous morality, may you also show them the error of their ways, bringing um, them to true saving faith and repentance, including those that we know and love. Lord, as we go over these verses on your ultimate judgment, may it remind us of the need to continue reaching out to those we know who have yet to surrender their lives to you. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Mark chapter 9, verse 43. And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. 2 Corinthians 5.10 For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. 1 Peter 4.17 For it is time for judgment to begin at the household of God. And if it begins with us, what will be the outcome for those who do not obey the gospel of God? John chapter 3, verse 18. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. Hebrews 9, 27. And just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. Romans fourteen twelve. So then... Each of us will give an account of himself to God. Matthew 12, 36 through 37. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every, excuse me, every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. One more. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So Lord, help us to keep this reality in mind as we go throughout our days, to be grateful for rescuing us and to keep an evangelistic uh, mindset. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, guys, another day. I really appreciate you guys being here so much. I can't tell you that enough. Um, it really encourages and helps me. So thank you again and hope you have a, a good one today. God bless you.